In today's video, we're going over my favorite manual therapy techniques for subacromial pain syndrome. So when we're talking about subacromial pain, what the heck are we talking about? Generally speaking, this is going to be pain originating from the rotator cuff. It's usually the top and the back of the rotator cuff. So essentially the supraspinatus as well as the infraspinatus. These folks will often complain of, excuse me, complain of pain on the lateral side of the shoulder. And if you think about subacromial pain, we also have the long head of the biceps that comes up through here, as well as the subacromial bursa. So these folks generally hurting either on the side or the front of the shoulder. So generally speaking, the research on subacromial pain and manual therapies is conflicting. So Peters et al. in 2020 showed that including manual therapies in the early stages of rehab was very beneficial, right? Most of the changes and outcomes were in the short term. So essentially doing the manual therapy and having an immediate change in pain or until about three weeks or so. After about three weeks, the results are about the same of manual therapy versus exercise, right? On the flip side, Paris Gavopoulos in 2023 actually found no difference between exercise and manual therapy versus exercise alone. And this was in the short term as well as the long term. To make matters even more confusing, Michener et al. in 2024 and JOSBT found that including manual therapies with exercise versus exercise alone was actually better, right? And the more confusing part was that they didn't have a change in the short term, their change was in the long term. So at 26 weeks as well as 52 weeks, right? Again, a little bit confusing, but including manual therapies into your rehab of subacromial pain can be beneficial. In today's video, we're gonna go over the exact manual therapies that they used in this study. So in this study, they had three different groups of manual therapies. The first of which was targeting the thoracic spine. If you have a patient that's stiff with PA testing in this area, or you actually extend their spine passively on the table and you notice they don't extend well through the thoracic spine, they might be good patients for these interventions. Prone PA mobilization. I have my patient lying on their stomach and from here I'm targeting the thoracic spine. So essentially right here at the base of the neck, all the way down to about here at your TL junction. What I'm gonna do is take my hands, I'm gonna put them on the back. First thing I'm gonna perform is called a skin lock, right? So I'm gonna twist the skin. And the reason why I do this is I wanna lock out the skin. So when I apply my pressure, I'm not just moving the skin, I'm actually targeting the thoracic spine. And from here I'm going to twist so I have a pisiform grip. So essentially this portion of my hand on both sides is on either side of the spine at the level I'm trying to intervene on. And once I have this grip, I'm going to ask the patient to take a deep breath in. And as they blow out, I'm going to try to get the very end range of motion of the thoracic spine. And I'm going to apply my PA mobilization just like so. To go along with this video, I have a free cheat sheet for you. It is an evidence-based cheat sheet for rotator cuff related pain. I'll give you all the knowledge to go from a beginner to a master in understanding rotator cuff related pathology. We go over the prevalence of these conditions, as well as the anatomy. We talk about the difference between tendonitis and tendinosis. We chat about risk factors, increase your likelihood of getting rotator cuff tendinopathy and tears. We talk about the clinical presentation of this disorder and also which tendons are most commonly involved. We talk about the different stages of pathology and whether or not the rotator cuff tear heals over the course of time. Next, I give you the bullet points about rehabilitation expectations. We round out the PDF with some surgical guidelines which your patients should go on to get surgery for rotator cuff tears. So I'm going to leave a link in the description in the show notes. Again, this is 100% free. Go ahead and download this right now. Prone PA thrust. So I'm gonna take my hands, place them on the patient's back, either side of the spine. From here, I perform my skin lock and then I have a pisiform grip. So I have one pisiform here on one side of the spine, other pisiform right on the other side of the spine. I'm gonna have the patient take a nice deep breath in. Say so blow out all of the way. I'm gonna make sure I get the very end range of motion at the spine and apply high velocity, low amplitude thrust mobilization. Seated thoracic spine extension mobilization. So I have my patient seated, and from here I wanna target thoracic spine, so basically somewhere between here and about here. I'm gonna take my hand, I'm gonna make a little V with my finger here and my thumb. And what I'm trying to do is take that V and go right over the spinous process like so, right? And from here, let's have you spin and face me, Mike. I'm going to take that same grip I'm gonna have my patient take his hands behind his back, right here, behind his neck, excuse me. Elbows go together. I'm gonna V-grip on the spinous process, the level that I want. And then from here, I'm going to extend the patient over my finger, just like so, okay? 
So I'm getting extension at that level that I'm targeting with my fingers. CT, distraction, thrust mobilization. You're gonna have your patient sit all the way back towards the end of the table so it makes it easier for you as a therapist. We're gonna have Mike take his hands and put them behind his head and interlock his fingers. From here, I'm gonna come through and get my arms through and then behind the neck. I'm gonna to try to interlace my fingers. Relax as best you can, Mike. It's important that I'm not pushing my patient's neck down because this can be pretty provocative. I'm really thinking about squeezing down with my elbows here. And from this position, I'm trying to get the CT junction vertical, right? Because the idea is you're trying to pull the CT junction whoop, straight up like this. So I'm gonna lean my back until the CT junction is vertical. My thrust mobilization is straight up, right? You ready to do this, Mike? Yep. All right. So from here, relax like a sack of potatoes. Bring your elbows together a little bit. Go ahead and take deep, deep, excuse me, a deep breath in. Blowing out, relaxing. Vertical. Just like so. The next series of manual therapies was for the posterior shoulder. If you have a patient that's limited with internal rotation, arm across the body, or if you're doing some capsular mobs and noticing that they're a little stiff posteriorly, then these might be some good interventions to try. Posterior glide of the glenohumeral joint. We're gonna have Mike lying on his back here. He's gonna roll over just a little bit, enough so I can get this towel right underneath his shoulder blade. The idea is that we wanna block that shoulder blade and make sure we're moving more from the glenohumeral joint. Next step is I'm gonna grab the patient's arm, and I like to kind of squeeze the arm within my armpit, and I'll actually pull out a little bit to get some distraction. From here, I wanna make sure that I'm on the humerus, so I'm coming off of the front of the shoulder and the chromium and onto the humerus. From here, I usually have the patient take a breath in, and as they blow out and relax, I try to pull up all the slack within the joint, and then I apply my posterior mobilization. Another thought is if I'm going straight back down to the table, I might be bonking right up against the glenoid because the glenoid actually faces a little bit more this way. So my force should be aligned with the joint, and I actually try to push a little bit of an angle this way. Let's go ahead, nice deep breath in, blow out relaxing, and if you can see, I'm trying to mobilize in this direction posteriorly. Shoulder mobilization with movement. I'm gonna take my right side hand and I'm going to be right on the scapula. It's important that I'm on the scapula and I'm not on the humerus here. So I'm gonna block just like so. Then my opposite side arm is gonna excuse me, come across and we go right onto the humerus. I'm gonna to try to posteriorly glide the humerus. And once I have that posterior glide, I'm gonna have Mike do a few reps of slow abduction, coming straight up while I maintain that glide the entire time. Another thing to keep in mind with this mobilization with movement is as you're going to abduction, you can also shuffle a little bit to your right, Mike, a little bit closer. We can click on the like button, we can subscribe to the Fitness Pain Free channel, and that's gonna help with shoulder pain. Scap blocked horizontal adduction. So if I take Mike's arm and just bring it all the way across his body, his shoulder blade actually goes along for the ride just like so. If I block the scapula down in place and then stretch, now the shoulder blade can no longer move and I'm actually stretching the structures on the posterior side of the shoulder. So in order to perform this mobilization, we just have Mike relax, I'm gonna take my hand, and I simply just go back and I block the scapula here. And once my scapula is blocked, Mike's scapula is blocked, I'm gonna go across the body to end range and just statically stretch for three sets of 30 seconds. Anecdotally, for folks who have a lot of shoulder pain, this might not feel great. So one modification you can make is take the elbow a little lower and stretch from that position. We're looking for folks to have a bit of a stretch in the back of the shoulder, not just a whole bunch of pain in the front. Internal rotation stretch. So Mike's gonna be on his back here. We're gonna bring this elbow up to about 90 degrees. I'm bringing a towel underneath of the elbow to bring the shoulder more into the scapular plane. If we're straight into horizontal abduction, sometimes that's a little provocative, right? And from here, I wanna try to stabilize the scap. So I'm gonna take my hand, grab onto the scap. My thumb is right by the coracoid process here. I wanna make sure that when we move, the shoulder blade doesn't dump up, okay, or dump forward. So I'm blocking here, and then what I'm gonna try to do is take my other side arm and just go into end range internal rotation. I can do a variety of things here. So for one, I can just hold it for a static stretch. The other thing I can do is do some oscillations into end range. The other option I have is contract, relax. So go ahead and push into me, into external rotation, and then relax, Mike. And when he relaxes, I just take up the slack, go a little deeper, then go ahead and push into me, into external rotation. Relax, we go a little bit deeper. Again. Inferior glide of the glenohumeral joint. So basically I wanna feel for the patient's scapula and feel where there's no more bone. And we know that at that point we're on the humerus. So 
So I'm gonna take the web space in my hand. And I'm going to go onto that same exact spot, make sure I'm on the glenohumeral joint. With the patient's arm, I'm also taking it, putting it into my armpit here to stabilize it. You can also try to distract a little bit to take up some of the slack within the joint before you do this. And again, find my spot. I'm gonna imply an inferior glide. So I'm trying to go straight down towards the toes. Here, down. PA glide of the AC joint. So we have Mike sitting here. We're gonna find his clavicle right here and it comes right over to his AC joint right here. This is actually pretty challenging to do in folks that have a, a lot of muscle mass. So for Mike, it's actually a little tough to grab onto the clavicle. But what you want to do is go and trace the clavicle towards the AC joint. And we're trying to hook right behind it, hold on to that clavicle. And from here, imparting an posterior to anterior glide. Inferior glide on the clavicle. So we're going to find Mike's clavicle here coming straight across, excuse me. We're gonna to try to get a little bit closer to the AC joint, but we're gonna stay proximal of that. From here, I'm gonna either use my hand, so using hypothenar eminence or part of my pisiform, or you can use your fingers, but I'm gonna to try to get right on that clavicle, and my force is straight and fearless, so I'm trying to push down towards his toes just like so. So the therapists in these studies perform the manual therapies twice per week for 10 to 15 total minutes and they were asked to perform one of these interventions from each group, right? So they didn't have to do every single one of these interventions. They were actually at, allowed to choose which ones based on the presentation. In terms of how intense they went with their mobilizations, they started a little bit easier and progressed over the course of time, depending on the patient's tolerance. So should you be using manual therapies in your patients to have subacromial pain? Well, this is a hot topic, right? There was a, a study published by Flowers et al. in 2024 that just showed that the large amount of research that we have for manual therapies and subacromial pain is low quality. So it's really hard to hang your hat on whether or not you should be performing manual therapies. I would have said prior to this new study that most manual therapies are short-term in nature. This study actually showed the opposite. So I will trial some of these manual therapies with my patients. If the patient feels like they're getting a good benefit, right? If I think they're getting a good benefit and over the course of time they're progressing, then I think that's a good reason to include these. But again, you probably don't have to include these into your rehab program. All right, so you may not need manual therapies as part of your treatment for subacromial pain, but you do need some exercises. I have a video for you, I'll leave a link in the corner, where I go over my favorite rotator cuff exercise for folks with subacromial pain. Go ahead and click on that link and I'll see you there. One, two.